air traffic management is the integrated process of managing air traffic and airspace through the provision of facilities and seamless services in collaboration with all parties and involving airborne and ground-based functions. Well, that's what we're breaking down this week. How do aircraft take off and land safely and the many processes that go on behind the scene? This is Aviation This Week on Channels Television. You're most welcome. I'm Bukala Jo Okitsumbi. The airspace is the portion of the atmosphere controlled by a country above its territory, including its territorial waters and any specific three-dimensional portion of the atmosphere. Most countries have two types of airspace. A controlled airspace exists where it is deemed necessary that air traffic control has some form of positive executive control over aircraft flying in that airspace. However, air traffic control does not necessarily control traffic operating under visual flight rules within this airspace. An uncontrolled airspace is one in which air traffic control does not have authority, although it may act in an advisory manner. Airspace may also be subdivided into a variety of areas and zones, including those where there are either restrictions on flying activities or complete prohibition of flying activities. Here in Nigeria, air traffic management rests on the shoulders of the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency. The current air traffic control system relies heavily on voice communications between air traffic controllers and pilots. Voice communications are used to relay instructions and other information essential to safe and expeditious flight for coordination of aircraft movement, protection of aircraft separation, advisories, clearances and weather services. In modern air traffic management, the term communication, navigation and surveillance is key. So, what exactly is communication and navigation? This VR is very high omnidirectional radio range, which aircraft picks to find its direction. It radiates 360 degrees, which aircraft picks to find its bearing to wherever the aircraft is going. It is very, very important because it, it, it shows you the bearing to and fro. When aircraft picks it, you turn to the VR of any station you are going to. It shows going and then coming. You know exactly where you are going and where you are coming from. The pilot calls them and tells them where they are coming from. That is shown on the scope. The most critical technology elements of the new environment are satellite-based navigation, increased use of data links rather than voice for pilot controller communication, and improved surveillance. Radar will scan the airspace, the entire airspace of Nigeria, and display it for us on the scope so that you can actually see the position of each of the aircraft flying. And with that, you ensure that the two of them doesn't get too, doesn't get too close to each other. In addition to modern methods, navigational aids still remain a critical part of air traffic management, both in the air and on ground. Navigational aid is the window through which pilots navigate a route and shoot approaches to the desired destination in day-to-day -day blind flying operations. In simple words, it's defined as any sort of marker which aids the traveller in navigation. Common types of such aids include instrument landing systems and beacons. Then this equipment has a function that has to do with DME. There's an equipment, there's an equipment inside the shelter called DME, distant measuring equipment. The glass globe is located with this equipment. The function of that DME is to give the start distance. Start distance, what I mean by distance measuring equipment, distance from where you can get the aircraft can tune 
with the glass to open and know his position, probably to the airport. So that Away from these, civil navigation requirements continue to evolve, as most recently evidence as performance-based navigation is now the new order. So